Next time we gonna see her off in uh, Dwayne Reed uh, <laughs> in a ball gown. We really shot the movie in the hood, so we, we was real beef. Amnesia. <laughs> Bar. Don't take debit or credit or nothing in here. It's just hold. Give mama a kiss, baby, before I go. Oh, I feel that shit. What's going on, folks? Nothing better to do. I'm Blogzilla, and this is the No Judgment Zone. Today, my guest is the only man to ever beat me in freestyle battling. <laughs> The legend Nick Cannon. What's going on, bro? Zilla, what up, man? I'm good. Can't complain. You have been working very hard on this movie. School Dance is finally coming out. Yeah. Yo, where'd you get the concept behind uh, this film? Honestly, it, it's, a, it's a bit right out of my stand-up act, which is a portion out of my life. Uh, I lost my virginity at a lock-in. Uh, <laughs> and honestly, we like that, that bit kind of always goes into this world of like, you know, kids being young and rowdy and you know, if you grew up in the hood, you know what a lock-in is, where they lock you in a gymnasium or a church function overnight, keep you off the streets, and it's just a bunch of debauchery that goes on. Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> so, we kind of took that idea, but then from the same concept, like I grew up loving stuff like House Party and, uh, you know, those Friday, those type of films where it's like a, a young R-rated comedy. We don't have a lot of those. I mean, everything's a little watered down nowadays because everybody wants to be politically correct and, you know, on the safe edge, which is great. You know, I mean, I love all the, you know, Tyler Perry movies and all that stuff, but I wanted to give something to where, you know, somebody could just, you know, or, or whatever, however you get right, with whatever you roll or whatever you drink to sit back and, and watch this over and over and over like Cats did with Friday and House Party. Was it hard getting Lionsgate behind this film? Uh, at first it was very easy to get Lionsgate to, uh, to be a part of the concept of young kids and having a good time and dancing and all of that stuff. Uh, I think once I actually created the, the whole film, they saw how raw and edgy and over the top it was. It was like, yo, who do we sell this to? Mm -hmm. So I think that was kind of like the, the little hiccup in the system. But They uh, thought they were getting safe in the cannon. Yeah, <laughs> they thought they was like, oh yeah, the guy from America's Got Talent, sure, give him as many movies as he wants. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? I think I, the purpose of it, I was trying to make a raw, edgy comedy, and I think I think we did that, man, and I, I'm, I'm extremely proud of it. And you got a, a bunch of heavy hitters in there. Kevin Hart's in there looking like uh, Easy e <laughs> exactly. You got my man Lil Duvall in there with the face tattoo. <laughs> uh, and, and Mike Epps in there as well. Yeah. Uh, was it difficult keeping the control? Did you just let those guys go wild and do what they do? I let them go, but I mean, there was always inner comedian beefs and all that stuff. Like One thing, I mean, because we, sh we really shot the movie in the hood, so we there was real beef that we had to make sure certain, you know, neighborhoods was cool and everybody was good. But once everybody came together, like everybody left all of that yeah. comedian beef and, and all that stuff out, out out the door. So we, I mean, we had everybody too, man. We had George Lopez, we had uh, Lunel, we had like it, some real heavy hitters came through. You called them favors or? Uh, or <laughs> oh, definitely favors. We had no money to do this movie. That was the other thing too. I mean, everybody came in and did it for the love and yeah. just because we did this movie on a shoestring and that's the best type of way to uh, to make a film I mean because when you sitting around and you got you know three months and big trailers and you know that stuff is cool and the paycheck is nice but uh, to get down in a way to where it's like yo we doing this we we all gonna show up here we gonna work and we doing it for the love of the craft you know the people are there for the right reasons absolutely now I actually know this be know about the movie because at the time I was uh, covering one of the actresses in the movie actually got sued by Kim for being like, oh, like, yeah, like the Gap yeah. commercial. Yeah. Was that like known on set? Because that's when it was happening when they were filming it. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, we knew about. Uh, I think it was one of the girls that we casted. I, I didn't when I casted her. I had no idea about the whole. Kim Kardashian lawsuit and all of that and Old Navy. Uh, I just thought she was hilarious and, and she was dope and she kind of fit, fit the part. Uh, but then as we you know heard about it come out, I was like, oh snap, that, that shorty that's in the movie. Right. Uh, and I mean, it's kind of cool though when you think about it because not only was she talented along with many others, but you we had a lot of those pop culture references yeah. that you know gave us the spike on social media and even as of right now. So you know, it's, it's one of those things where it always happens. It's got controversy everywhere. I'm always starting it too. Oh, speaking of you, <laughs> controversy, you got a lot of heat 
for uh, dressing up in the white face, trying to bring it back <laughs> on you. Uh, were, were you really like, were you ever like, come on, really, we really doing this, people? I mean, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Honestly, uh, based off of the, the fact, to one, I was trying to get some attention mm -hmm. and I did a very good job of it. Uh, that was the whole purpose. But then at the same time, to me, I always say like, yo, for the people who really had an issue with it, they, they really had to question themselves. Right. I mean, because there's a huge difference between humor and hatred. And they always want to talk about the double standard and stuff. Like, yeah, it's a double standard. Like, mm -hmm. double standards in the Constitution. Right. Like, but y'all don't really want to have that conversation. Don't, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, y'all don't really want to go there. Like, because that's not even, that wasn't my intentions. And for someone to actually step out and say, oh, that's racist. Like, come on, man. You, you, you're taking that word and, and diluting it by just saying everything's racist. Absolutely, and plus if you're a fan of comedy, they would know exactly. that's actually uh, something that uh, Eddie, Eddie, Murphy Eddie Murphy did, did. on mean, Saturday Night Live. Yeah, every, and I mean, even before then, like, whether it's, it's, it's the difference between from Dan Aykroyd, Chevy Chase, Gene Wilder, all of those, to even Robert Downey Jr. doing it, when it's done in the right context, yeah, no sense. one has a problem with right. it. To where, whether it's Eddie Murphy, the Wayne's brothers, Dave Chappelle, myself, kept like, Crazy thing, I've been doing that character since I was on Nickelodeon. Mm. Uh, well, I was a teenager. Yeah. Ain't nobody have a problem with it then. You know what I mean? It's just like, but everybody's looking to push that controversy button. I was a lucky cat that week. So well, I want to get your opinion on Bieber. Bieber's in the news right now. <laughs> the video just came out of him. Reckless. Couple hours. He, was, he just was singing. Uh, one one lonely nigga. Lonely like, nigga. What? What's going on? Do you think he'll get the same type of heat that you got, or worse? Man, I, I mean, honestly, to me, I think it's it's a different connotation in a sense to where I was trying to stir up controversy. Yeah. I know it. I, I own up to everything that I always do, and that's one thing that people gotta respect about me. Like I ain't never gonna run away from anything. Uh, but I think he was a he truly was a little kid doing some little kid yeah. stuff uh, and I I don't think I think he understood what he was doing because I know him but I don't think he meant it in a way that he didn't understand like especially this generation they don't understand the weight of that type of stuff they think it's just being funny but one thing I do appreciate and acknowledge is that like yo let's just keep it all the way funky let's be honest you know what I mean let's not act like the word nigga does not exist it does. let's act like white folks don't be singing that shit all the time <laughs> whether <laughs> yeah, like, let's not whether they saying it trying to be funny and like white kids tell black jokes yeah. I've heard them do it all the time we tell white jokes right. like let's not act like and you say it to your white friend yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Russell calls every white person my nigga <laughs> like and and sometimes like this, even you go to the Paula Dean situation like yo if somebody got a, a gun to my head and they threatening my life I might call them a nigga like, <laughs> like if that's if I'm trying to like you can't this is America there's people we gonna do some things out of hate we gonna do some things out of anger we gonna do some things out of frustration but that's the beauty of being able to live here is that we could do those things and still live to see another day now if you got to deal with the consequences and the repercussions of you saying that then that's that's your own situation right. Bieber is gonna have to deal with that he said it he was a kid unfortunately but now he's gonna have to deal with it in a certain way but if you can't deal with it then you leave all that alone so now I want to get into your business a little bit I really want to know what was the conversation between you and Mariah when she decided to go on the subway. Yo, I actually, it was a phone call because I was in LA. I was like, you about to do what? <laughs> like, but uh, it was funny because I had just left because I, I was there when she was getting ready to go to the, the fresh air gallon. I had to head to the airport. So then by the time I landed, I heard about it. And I was like, yo, she's wild. <laughs> but uh, I mean, then like just yesterday, she, she took the kids to the park in another gown. I was like, this is her thing right now. Yeah. She's going to put on gowns and go do regular stuff. Right. Next time we're going to see her off in uh, Dwayne Reed uh, <laughs> in a ball gown. <laughs> white people party music. What song, what hip hop song crosses over to be white people party music? And what song would you recommend people to listen to oh. off of white people party music? Uh, there's so many. I mean, but you got to, uh, probably Young MC's Bust a Move is mm. the, the ultimate hip hop really song is. Really is. <laughs> over to white people party music. On my album, no, it's a. I would probably say uh, I got a song called "Fucking Awesome." That just is the epitome of white people party music. That's the one I would think people should listen to. So I know my producer doesn't want me to do this. Uh oh. I'm gonna do it anyway. Uh -oh. I need my rematch. Uh oh. Bruh. Last time I, I saw Nick, 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 Nick destroyed me. Yeah. So I, 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 back. I need a, I need, I need a rematch. I need, we should do a rematch on this. No, I don't want to do it on the show. Cause like, I don't want to get killed yeah. in front of the world. <laughs> Let's do it right now. Uh oh. 
You really ready? You you know Kevin Hart tried this and he he lost bad. Bars. Yeah, he just when people you just don't know when to say when. I'm I, I, I'm ready. All right, so you ready to do this? Let's get it. All right, I'm going first. I went first last time. Yeah. No, you champ. Your champions go last. All right, cool. There you go. I gave you the champion. Wilding out champion. All right. Bars. Bars. Just to let y'all know, trying to rip me. It's like using your hand to try to stop electricity. Oh. Everything I walk past falls apart. I can aim in the dark and hit a penny off a of pop tart. Oh, he it's sounds not smart. It is really. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't go freestyle against Nick, cause I don't want to get ripped, and that's too sick. He got the run DMC clothes on. Uh-oh. I got the denim on denim on. Uh -oh. Ain't nothing going on but him getting ripped. Nick's verse last time was sick, but mine's right now got amnesia. <laughs> bars, bars. All right, all right. Man. Amnesia, dog. Don't make me squeeze you like some Charmin. You tissue paper, and I'm coming to harm it. I'm gonna get you like this, Mr. Zilla. This is a rematch. Call it the Thriller in Manila. Been known to be a killer. The ladies, that is, and it's the kid, and not the whiz. But I'm gonna take the biz. You come in on me all wrong with them Sassoon jeans on, dog. You don't wanna see me flip your hat up because we gonna do this wildin'. Out June second, get that up. I want to know who you guys thought won. Leave your comments down yeah. in the comment section. I know Nick has to run. You want to take his kids to the park? Yeah, in my tuxedo. Right. So join us next week. You know what we're gonna do next week? What? Next week we're gonna blindfold alligators, <laughs> wrestle them, and throw them in a bathtub with a pretty girl in it. I've seen that happen twice. We doing it. Yo, what's good, Josh? Your man Nick Cannon, aka Mr. Incredible. You're watching Global Grind TV. Let's go. First record I do on two chains, boo. You know what I'm saying? Followed by Ryan Round on getting it. the money. I'm gonna leave. Ask for a white girl. What's wrong with that? And and she will leave you. I'm sure for.